Hello guys, uh, it's me. In this video, we'll be talking about the ethnogenesis of the Balts and the Baltic people. Now, let's start with topic zero in the Europeans. Balts, just like all other Northern Europeans, are mainly a mixture of European Neolithic farmers, such as globular amphora culture or funnel beaker, with Proto-Indo-Europeans such as Yamne. Now, what sets Balts apart from all other Northern Europeans is that Balts have a third component, Baltic hunter-gatherer component. This component has been gradually decreasing in the Baltic ethnic group as time went on, with Bronze Age Balts having the most, and Viking Age and onwards Balts having the least. Baltic languages are the closest languages to Sanskrit and are Satam languages. Now, here I say that uh, Bronze Age bots have the most of this hunter-gatherer component and Viking Age bots have the least, but let me just demonstrate that you, to you here with um, illustrative DNA. So let's look at Bronze Age bots, which I don't even think they're, I don't even know if they're really bots, but I'm going to discuss that later. Uh, you see they're scoring 64.6% European hunter-gatherer. Now compare that with migration period, which is Iron Age bots, they are scoring 63.2% um, European hunter-gatherer. You see the European hunter-gatherer is decreasing as you go from the Bronze Age into the, migra um, the Iron Age. The European hunter-gatherer is decreasing in the Balts. Now, let's go back to my uh, video. So, what are Centum and Satum languages? In the European languages are either Centum, Centum, or Satum. The difference between these two really is how you pronounce the word hundred. So, for example, Russian is a Satum language, you would say Sotnya in Russian. Um, English is a Centum language, you would say uh, century or yeah century or cent in english so you see there is a change from s to c right in russian you say sotnya in english you say cent or you say kentum that's the difference between satum and kentum and uh <laughs> kentum and satum languages i'm sorry so in the european phylogenies online are usually mostly very stupid uh what you will see typically when you look up the phylogenetic tree of um in the european languages or some kind of a family tree of Indo-European languages, you will see that they're all kind of equally related to Indo-Iranian. They're all kind of equally related to each other. That's not the case at all. That's not the case at all, and I'm going to explain why. Not all Indo-European languages are equally related. Baltic languages in particular are undoubtedly a lot more related to Indo-Aryan tongues than are Celtic and Germanic languages. And in fact, I am willing to bet that they are more similar to Indo-Aryan tongues than they are to Celtic or to Germanic tongues. Here's why I think that. Number one, it's shared corridor ancestry between the Balts um, and the Indo-Aryans. Indo-Aryans do not have bell beaker ancestry. They are entirely corded ware. So you would assume that the European ethnicities, ethnicities who have the most corded ware ancestry would have the most similar culture and language to the uh, Indo-Aryans. Number two, prolonged Indo-Aryan contact. Uh, which means shared vocab. And I'm just going to demonstrate to you some of this shared vocab. Some of this is due to contact. Some of this is due to um, just common roots that were preserved. But let's let's look at this. So Sanskrit word on the, on the left, Latvian on the right. And I'm going to add my own input, what it is in Russian. Number one, pada, which is foot in English. And peda in Latvian. In Russian, it would be naga. Uh, we say naga for, uh, for leg in Russian. Number two, surya in Sanskrit. Saul in Latvian in... Russian, we say Sonsa. Number three, Danam in Sanskrit, Davat in Latin. In Russian, we say Davat or Dai or Dali or Dayu or Daitie, basically to give, right? Uh, number four, Sanskrit Agni and Latvian Ugnus. In Russian, it is Agony, very similar to Sanskrit too. Russian is also pretty similar to Sanskrit, you will find. Number five, uh, Sanskrit Madhu, Latvian Medus. In Russian, we say Mod. So, also pretty similar to both Sanskrit and Latvian. Number six, uh, brat in Sanskrit, uh, bradis in Latvian, we say brat in Russian, so pretty much the same thing. Number seven, yatra, pilgrimage, or jat, yat, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, in Latvian. Yezdit, maybe that's, a com I, I don't, I can't come up with a, I can't come up with a similar word in Russian for that. Uh, number eight, aksha, in Sanskrit, atse, asia, in Latvian, I don't know how to pronounce that. In Russian, we say either oko, which is like the old version. That's how you say it in the old Russian. You say oko uh, for I, or you say glass, which is kind of like the modern, how most modern Russians say the word I. Uh, number nine, dvier and durvis. In Russian, we say dvier, the same as in Sanskrit. Uh, number 10, svapna, to dream, and sapnis. In Latvian, we say uh, son or spat, <laughs> kind of similar to this. Uh, number nine, Sanskrit mishra. 
Latvian maisit. I think it's misit. Uh, In Russian, we say misit to mix something, or we could say mis uh, mis. Um, yeah, we can say that. Number number twelve, bu in Sanskrit and but in Latvian. In Russian, we say but, pretty similar to both. Number three, upha uh, in Sanskrit and abi in Latvian. We say oba in Russian. Also pretty similar to these to these words. Uh, number fourteen, mirti in Sanskrit and mirt to die in Latvian. Mirt definitely sounds a lot more similar to what I'm um, to what I would expect in Russian. We say. Uh, smerť or mortvy to describe a dead man. It's like if you're a dead man, you'd say mortvy, mortvets. So also similar in terms of vocab. Now number fifteen, živa in Sanskrit. That sounds very Slavic to me actually. And živa to be alive in Latvian, yes, žizn. Uh, um, that's how we say life in Russian. Živoy is somebody that's alive. Živaya uh, is a woman that's alive. Uh, number sixteen, sva, my own in Sanskrit, and sava in Latvian. In Russian, we would say svoy, so also pretty much the same thing. And number 17, vayu, wind in Sanskrit, and vehu, uh, wind in Latvian. We would say vetr. So maybe vetr is not so similar to vayu and vehu, but it is also, I think, quite uh, quite similar to those words. Now, getting onto the topic of origins of bots and specifically them, because these are all very interesting things to know about Yamnaya and global amphora, but this is the origins of all Northern Europeans, of Ger Germans, Celts, um, even Latin people have origins from the global amphora and the Yamna. But what makes Balts separate from all the other Indo-Europeans? Let's talk about this. Topic number one, Balotoslavs. Balotoslavs emerged out of the TRZ culture. I'm not going to pronounce that. I'm not, I'm not able to pronounce these words. You might have caught on to that already. Uh, in the late Bronze Age, TRZ had ancestry from the Unitist culture which is kind of the homeland. It's, it's the ancestor of all Balts, German, Germans, Slavs, Celts, uh, which, according to my speculations, was a common ancestor to Germans, Celts. And, yeah, I'm just going ahead of myself here. Now, Turlogiske samples are TRZ culture individuals from Lithuania. And you can, you'll be able to download them. Uh, one of those samples from Liquid is in the description. This is the sample that you'll be able to download. And eventually, um, I'll get to it. Eventually, on my channel, you will see every ancient sample that exists, you will see it on my channel. I'm serious here, guys. I'm serious about this. You're going to see all of them. Uh, but basically, this TRZ culture eventually morphed into the Lusatians, which are the early Slavs, and Milagrat culture, which is the Balts. East Balts also lived in the areas of central Russia in the Iron Age, and Russian historians refer to Baltic settlements in Russia as Mashinskaya culture. Now, or Moshinskaya. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I think it's Moshinskaya. So you see here, uh, the purple is basically all the Slavic cultures. Uh, and this is the Iron Age. So uh, in the West, it's West Baltic Kurgan culture. In the in the middle, it's uh, ceramic something culture. In the middle, a, a bit to the right, it's Dnieper Dvina culture. And on the very right, it's Moshinskaya culture. Uh, this in the green, I think, is supposed to represent Uralic cultures. And yes, I think it's accurate. Yes, uh, because at this time, um, at this time, Uralic people already were uh, in the... Uh, Northeast of Europe. So this, I think this is an accurate map. Now, looking at this Kiev culture right here, I'm just going to deviate a little bit from the topic. Uh, Kiev culture, you might be under the impression that it's a Slavic culture. And it says here, Kultura narodov predpoložitelne govoreshih na slavianskih jezikah. So you would say, uh, it is cultures of people who supposedly spoke a Slavic languages, but I don't think that's the case at all uh, with this Kiev culture, or at least not, not for the entirety of this Kiev culture. I'm, I'm talking about this here. In this map, the Kiev culture either does not represent Slavs or does not represent a total Slav majority, as Iron Age Ukrainian samples from this location are not Slavic, rather they are a mixture of Germanic um, and Iranic and Balkan ethnic groups. What am I talking about here? Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So these are the two Iron Age... Um, Iron Age uh, Ukrainians from this region, and let's see who who are they who are they most similar to, right? Let's see who who they are most similar to. So this one, Legazina, is most similar to Slovakians and Czechs, and you might be tempted to say, well, it's probably a Slav, but be uh, be on the lookout for something. Look at the single single mode Sorb Finnish East and Kubacini, and this is not a Slavic result. And at least not a purely Slavic result. And uh, Shishaki here is Rumelia East, which is basically Turkish, plus Finnish, plus French. So this is not a typical Slavic result. You don't see any Ukrainian here. You don't see any Russian. And um, that's why I'm saying 
these two key of culture ind individuals or Chernyakhiv culture individuals from this region in the Iron Age uh, were definitely not Slavic, but they were instead a mixture of Germanic, Iranic, and Balkan ethnic groups. Now let's talk about the Bronze Age Balt, the Turlogiskia, right? It's this one. Let's uh, see what he is closest to. The Bronze Age Balt is closest to Lithuanians, Latvians, uh, Estonians, everything you, what you might expect. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Lithuanian plus Finnish plus Darginian. Very interesting stuff. A uh, pretty typical result for even a modern Lithuanian. Um, by the way, in case you want to compare yourself, this is a little model that I've built to determine how much Mediterranean, uh, Northern European, and East Asian ancestry we all have. For example, the Villa Bruna here is indigenous European hunter-gatherer. Uh, Afonta Vagara III here is ancient North Eurasian. This is the common ancestry between Europeans and Native Americans. Um, Turpin Arbasi hunter-gatherer is Anatolian hunter-gatherer, which is the ancestor of Anatolian Neolithic farmers and also is related to Caucasus hunter-gatherers. And here is the China Amur River, which is kind of just an East Asian, East Asian component. So let's see what we score. For example, the to, the Baltic, the Bronze Age Balt, is scoring forty two point eight percent of the Southern Pinarbasi component. So he's actually, um, he's actually pretty Southern. He's more, he's almost half Mediterranean, pretty much. Uh, Chernyakhiv Legerzhina is more Mediterranean. He's twenty three point two percent Mediterranean and. Shishaki is 62.4%. So these, um, where, where are they? These two um, samples from this region are actually super Mediterranean, more Mediterranean than Ukrainians, more, more Mediterranean than modern Russians, more than Mediterranean than any modern ethnicity that lives in this region, which, which are only Russians and Ukrainians. But um, now compare me to this, right? I'm a modern Russian person. Uh, so for example, if you compare me to this Bronze Age Balt, you see that I am 7% more Pinarbasi hunter-gatherer. I'm 7% more Anatolian hunter-gatherer than this Bronze Age Balt, right? I'm a lot more Southern than this Balt. And I also have 2% Chinese Amur Hunt River, which he doesn't. Um, now, how about we compare this with like Latvians? How, how is he different from Latvians? Let's see how, let's see how he's different from Latvians. Um, put that. I am holding the mic with one hand, so that means I have to use the other hand to do all my mani manipulations. It's pretty difficult to do. Uh, the Latvian is, let's clear all that. The Latvian is 43.6% Pinarbasi. And the, so the Latvian is actually more Southern. The Latvian has more Anatolian hunter-gatherer admixture than this um, Bronze Age Turlogiske person. So this just tells you how Northern these Turlogiske people were. Um, so modern Ukrainians and Russians do not have much Iranic or Gothic admixture, and most of the Irani Iranic admixture in our ethnos is due to medieval Turkic influence rather than some kind of Iron Age Sarmatian heritage. So Russians, uh, Ukrainians, we are not Sarmatians. We shouldn't be um, LARPing as Sarmatians. We should stop doing that. Uh, whatever Iranic admixture we have, we have it because we have Turkic, Turkic heritage. We got it from the Turks. Now... Um, Proto Prague Karchak culture, right in the middle of this map, is likely the foundation of the Slavic ethnic group. This is the Proto Prague Karchak culture here, uh, third to fourth century common era. Now, let's move on to the Turlogiske samples. And I just showed you the Turlogiske sample right here. By the way, um, actually, I'm going to go the extra mile. I'm going to go ahead and download this. I'm not, I don't even have to download this. Hold on. Phenotype. I don't even going to. I'm gonna just do do this this way. Um, search for this sample. Yeah, we're gonna see what it's looking like. So this is what this uh, Turlogiske three individual is predicted to look like. He's predicted to have blue eyes, blonde hair. Quite interesting stuff. So no MC1R, no MC1R anywhere. I don't know what this is. No IRF4, which is a hunter-gatherer, uh, blue eyes, red hair, hunter-gatherer gene, pale skin too. Uh, no BEH4. Does he have BEH2? Yes, he does have BEH2. So he's got BEH2, two derived variants and BEH2, no BEH4. Pretty typical for a, oh, uh, that's BEH2 too. Pretty typical result and no BH1. We, we aren't able to determine whether he has BH1 or not. It's a pretty typical result for a modern Balt or Slav. 
Um, he's probably not as light as Wysek is predicting him, but he is a light colored individual. Um, these samples are undoubtedly proto-Baltic and have a lot of modern Baltic drift. What I'm not convinced of is that these samples belong to the TRZ culture. Since they are more northern than Iron Age Balts, I think it is reasonable to assume that Iron Age and following them Viking Age Balts are a mixture of something from the Turlogiska cluster with something more southern, perhaps indeed from the TRZ culture. We know for certain that the genesis of the Balts ended in the Iron Age, and from this point on, they mixed and differentiated among themselves and already existed as a solid people group.